What's it like playing Forza Horizon 5 with the wheel? Let's hear my thoughts in this video. My name is Nikolai, and this is Joyshift. I like to film and build cool cars in Forza Horizon 5. If you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you can always be the first one to watch new videos. We're gonna learn a whole lot about cars, we're gonna customize them, we're gonna drive them, and just have a lot of fun with them. Let's go ahead and jump into this video. What's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna be talking about playing Forza Horizon 5 with the wheel. Now, later in this video, I am gonna share with you guys my wheel settings that I think are a good all-arounder for grip driving, drifting, just everything in the game, off-roading, all that. And I am playing on a Logitech G920 wheel, but these wheel settings will also work on other wheels. You may need to fine-tune them for other wheels, but they do work very well with the G920, and it's all personal preference. If you like my settings, that's great. They might not feel the best for you, but it's all just personal preference. But for the most part, I think a lot of people have been enjoying these settings, so I will share those with you. Now, let's talk about Horizon 5 with a wheel. I love it because if we talk about the improvement from Horizon 4 to Horizon 5, it does feel much more realistic. Playing with the exact same wheel in Horizon 4 versus Horizon 5 is a different feeling. So in Horizon 5, it feels much more realistic, but also it is more fun in the sense that I feel like I have more control over the car. So in Horizon 4, it felt very bouncy and it just didn't feel as smooth and as connected to the car. But now I'm playing Horizon 5 with the same wheel and it feels a lot more realistic, but it also has that arcade feel that you love because paired with the right settings, it can be very fun to play Horizon 5 with the wheel. Now, I wanna talk about some issues I've had with this wheel. So, a lot of times, for some reason, the clutch doesn't work, and this is due to Horizon 5, this has nothing to do with the actual wheel, Something to do with just, I guess, the uh, some glitch in the game. I'm not sure. I hope this gets fixed in a in an update soon. But also, for some reason, my steering wheel is not aligned. Like, literally, if I hold it straight, the car will drive straight. But if I let go of the wheel, it's going to start turning to the right for some reason. So that's some issues I've found. But now that we've mentioned, you know, the issues and we can get those out of the way, let's talk about the overall experience of playing Horizon with a wheel. Now, Horizon 5 is a game with a lot of off-roading and cross-country. So you are going to be driving from on road to off-road a lot in the game now let's say you're playing the eliminator you're going to definitely be doing a lot of off-road in that game mode so essentially what we want with the wheel is to have a wheel that can feel very controllable and very realistic on the road that's pavement but when we actually go off-road we want it to feel like it's not too much because I feel like if you were doing 90 miles per hour in a supercar off-road, you would probably break that car. So we don't want it to be too too out of ordinary here. So we want it to feel more like an arcade in the sense when we're driving off-road because we don't want our wheel to be shooting all over the place, but we do want it to be still controllable. So I think if you try out these wheel settings, you will definitely enjoy it. Now, my overall review on this is I think if you play with the wheel, and Horizon 5, you will have a lot of fun. But you also need to understand that Horizon 5 is still an arcade-styled game. Now, it's not like Need for Speed, where Need for Speed, the force feedback in that game is just not really there. With a game like that, it almost kind of feels like it's just like, you know, like there's not much force feedback and it definitely feels like it's a video game and not a real car. But what I love about Horizon 5 is it's a good balance between an arcade game and a real car. So if you have the right settings here, which I will show you guys here soon in the video, and you pair it with a car that you know how it feels like in real life. So for example, I drive a Toyota 86 in real life. So if I drive my Toyota 86 in real life and then I hop onto the game here with Forza and my simulator setup, it feels very realistic because I think a common issue that a lot of people, when they play this game, they're like, oh, this is weird. I can't really get a sense of speed. So I'm always spinning out. I'm always crashing. That's kind of the hard part to get with a video game. But I do think in Horizon 5, it's a huge improvement over Horizon 4 to actually be able to feel speed, you know, the motion blur in this game. Even if you're playing at 30 FPS on like, let's say an Xbox One S or One X, you still get a lot of motion blur. But then if you're playing on like a Series X or S, you'll get 60 FPS if you're playing in performance mode and it still feels very realistic now if you're playing on PC and you're able to get higher frame rate that's awesome but I'm playing on a series X so I can't really do that I'm kind of capped at 60 FPS but even then it's just a very immersive game and I would highly recommend that if you're playing Horizon 5 it is a totally different experience playing on a wheel because it just feels so much more immersive and just so much more realistic and I think it's definitely one you need to try out now is this game like a set of Corsa where it feels super realistic in terms of physics 
not really but it's realistic enough that you definitely do enjoy the game still so now let's go ahead and share with you guys my wheel settings before we actually go into our wheel settings we need to head over into difficulty because in difficulty we are going to change a few settings that are super important and i have mine tuned to these difficulty settings so you need to make sure that at least for the first you know when you're first trying this out you should have, you should have these difficulty settings set up here because this is going to be what i tuned my wheel settings for so it needs to all balance and match so first of all we're going to actually have our braking set to anti-lock on i like having abs on it just makes it easier and that's really the only assist that i have now for steering i am running simulation if you have it set to normal steering it's going to feel a little bit more plush the car is actually going to have basically a gyro where it'll counter correct for you and counter steer so if you want it to be a little bit easier on you, you could try normal steering, but I am running simulation because this is the most realistic feeling. This is most what a real car will feel like. And I find that this is giving me the most feedback and the most realistic feedback because keep in mind what I'm going for here is a realistic driving experience. Now for traction and stability control, I have both of those off because I don't like those interfering when I try to drift or just grip drive. And then for shifting, I am running manual with clutch. This is all personal preference. You can run automatic, regular manual or manual with clutch that has nothing to do with the steering or anything like that it's basically just whatever transmission you like that's basically all the settings you'll need for difficulty the rest you can just adjust for whatever you want that won't have any effect on the actual steering now let's actually go ahead and head over into our steering control so if you go right under controls in the menu into advanced controls you will see you actually have all of your advanced controls for the steering wheel now if you go in here and you don't have the same settings as i do what you probably have set up is your actual controller settings so in order to get out of this you need to access the actual steering controls from your steering wheel and the game will automatically have these controls set up so if you enter it from your controller it's going to have the advanced controls for your controller but if you go in with the steering wheel it'll of course go in and have your steering controls so the very first thing we're going to do is set vibration to off I don't like how this feels all it does especially with the g920 all it does is make it feel like it's just i mean okay what well, is vibrating but just feels like it's cheap like it just shakes and it doesn't feel natural it doesn't feel like an actual vibration you'd feel through a real car steering so i just have it set off but if you like it feel free to go ahead and use it invert look i have that off now for steering access dead zone inside and outside i have those set from zero to 100 because a real car is going to be zero to 100 this is going to give us 900 degrees for a simulation steering wheel feeling this is exactly what we want if we want a realistic feeling now i know a lot of people do tend to like maybe 540 so if you like that go ahead and set it to zero to 60 but i like it as realistic as possible and a realistic car is going to have zero to 100 which is 900 degrees and that's exactly what we want so steering linearity also i have that set to 50 because a real car is going to be at 50. now for acceleration access dead zone inside outside also zero to 100 that works for the brake as well and then for the clutch because a real pedal goes zero to 100 you have full control because the more actual distance you can travel with the pedal the more control you have so mid corner you know you can actually have more throttle control more input less input exactly what you want it's just a little bit more fine tuning so when you're actually driving you can have more control over the car this applies to e-brake as well but i don't actually have an e-brake setup so mine is just a button on the wheel but if you do have an e-brake you can play around with that and see what you like most for vibration scale i have it set at 0.5 but i do have vibration set to off so it doesn't really matter this setting could be literally anything and since it's off it does not matter but if you do decide to have vibration on then go ahead and adjust this to whatever you like and whatever is most comfortable with you now here are the important settings this is what's going to really distinguish the way the wheel feels and this is what it's going to give you those really nice settings so first off force feedback scale i have that set at 0 0.8 so at 0 0.8 it's enough that i feel force you know actual force feedback in the wheel but it's not enough that it wobbles it back and forth so if you're driving and let's say you're just driving at i don't know 60 miles per hour and your wheel is wobbling back and forth if you let go of the wheel that means your force feedback is set way too high. So I think at 0.8, it's enough that it doesn't wobble back and forth, but you still do feel actual force feedback in the wheel. Now for center spring scale, basically what this is, is let's say you're drifting and your wheel is rotating. This is actually like the spring rate or the, the power you feel that for it to actually center. So when it's rotating back, you want it to center because a real car, if you've ever drifted a real car, what happens is the wheels will self-correct. The car will automatically want to correct to the center. So 
you want that to happen in the game as well. So basically by having it set to 1.1, it's gonna mimic what a real car would do if you were to drift it. Now for wheel damper, I have this set all the way up to 1.8. So the reason I have it so high is because our force feedback is down low. So what this does is by having the force feedback down lower, but the actual wheel damper up at 1.8, which is fairly high, you know, the max you can get is two. What this does is it allows you to have a very stiff, tight, controllable feeling wheel, but it doesn't actually feel like it's wobbling back and forth. It feels like you still have control. This one is actually all personal preference. So if you feel as if the wheel is too lightweight, actually turn this up to 1.9 or 2.0. But if you do feel as if the wheel is too heavy, you can knock this down a couple notches. It's all personal preference. This is really where you're gonna do the most of the adjusting. So if you try these settings out and this wheel feels too tight or too loose, try it out, adjust it, you know, plus or minus one or two, maybe even more, see what you like most and then go from there because this is gonna be definitely the first reference point because I'm sure these settings aren't gonna work for everyone, right? I don't think everyone is gonna be able to use these settings and right off the bat, very first try, they're gonna say, oh, these are perfect. I think it's gonna work for most people, but people who really want that fine tuning, I say start here because this is gonna be the best place to mess around with and then see what do you like more? Do you want it stiffer, tighter, and then just go from there. Now for the mechanical trail, I have this set to 1.0. Now this one works really good right in the middle because what the mechanical trail actually does is it sets the aligning torque. Essentially what the setting does is by having it at a larger value, you're gonna feel less of the understeer, but having it at a lower value, you're gonna feel more of the understeer. So if you feel like you want more understeer, lower the value. If you feel like you want less understeer, raise the value. Force feedback minimum force, I have set to 0.5. Now the reason this is at 0.5, which is the very lowest setting you can go, is because when you're driving normally and you aren't actually going aggressive with the car, you don't wanna feel a lot of force feedback. You want it to be very smooth. And what this allows for you to do is have it set that when you're not driving fast, the, the wheel isn't gonna actually give you a lot of force feedback, which is exactly what you want. Because let's say you're just cruising 30, 40 miles per hour in a real car, you're not gonna feel anything in the wheel for the most part. If you're on a smooth, flat road and you're just driving in a straight line, your wheel should not be fighting you, especially at such a low speed, because even if you're doing like, you know, more than that, like 60 miles per hour, if you're just driving straight, you don't want to feel too much, but it's when you start cornering that you want to feel understeer, you want to feel the tires, you want to feel the aligning torque, that's when you want to feel it. So I think having it set to 0.5, what this does is it allows us to have a nicer range. So we can go from the very low setting to what we have, which is 0.8 for the actual force feedback scale. So this gives us more of a range of how, how much force feedback we can feel. So if we had both of them set to, let's say 0.8 at the exact same value, it would always feel the same. Same, but this allows it so when we're driving normally we don't feel as much but when we're driving more aggressive we will also feel it because our force feedback is set to 0.8 for force feedback load sensitivity i have that set at 1.2 and then road fuel scale is at 0.5 and off-road fuel scale is at 0.0 now these three settings are probably going to be on the very light side because I think in real life, if you took a car off-roading at 100 miles per hour on a really bumpy dirt road, you would feel a whole lot in the steering wheel, but this is an arcade game. It's Forza Horizon. We're driving off-road in Lamborghinis and Ferraris, so it doesn't need to be fully realistic all the time. And this is the one you know part of the setting guide that is going to be definitely more comfortable rather than actually feeling realistic because let's be real if you're taking a 4GT off-roading on a rally course and it's a bone stock 4GT um, you're gonna destroy that thing in real life so this kind of doesn't even apply so I have these settings very low because when I go off-road I don't want to feel my wheel throwing me all over the place everyone's different right some people want a different feeling wheel but these are what work for me these are what I find to enjoy the most when I'm driving and these also match most closely to what I want in a realistic feeling steering wheel minus those off-road feels so try it out use those wheel settings with your wheel and if you don't have a wheel I would highly recommend getting one I think it really makes the game a lot more fun and a lot more immersive now i might even start getting into vr i don't know i think it's definitely something for the future to consider but i definitely do think playing with a nice tv with a really good setup with the wheel it makes it so much more fun i mean really like i literally drive in this game just to drive because it gets that like itch out of me you know when i go drive my real car i don't want to drive it fast anymore i try to keep it safe so i keep all the fast racing for the video game where it's safe to drive fast but in real life i keep it safe if you enjoyed the video and want to see many more just like it please do make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We have a whole bunch of Forza videos on the channel as well as a lot of wheel gameplay. So definitely do make sure to stick around and subscribe. But other than that, we'll see you in the next one.